another edition of Trancat Night special guest exclusive podcast right here on the Trancat.org website. Folks, today is September the 5th, 2015, and I hope you all are having a very wonderful and blessed day. And we are very honored today to back on uh, a man who frequents the podcast on a regular, uh, Gil Broussard, independent researcher. Uh, you can get over to his work not only on YouTube. I'll allow Gil to get out all the shameless self-promotion time, uh, well, anywhere throughout the podcast, but specifically at the end. Uh, but he's been covering Planet uh, 7X for quite some time. And uh, listen, uh, we're seeing an awful lot on the Earth Changes fronts uh, in terms of, uh, you know, Yellowstone uh, having all these types of anomalies. New fault line in Los Angeles. Uh, we even have a peak in meteor showers, I believe, this September, which I got up on the website uh, we've got, uh, we just recently had a 6.5 quake off of Oregon, uh, which is a little concerning, obviously. So much to discuss with Gil Broussard. We were uh, very uh, unfortunate. We weren't able to get video for this one, folks. So we're hoping next month uh, to get a nice video segment with some visual presentation uh, by Gil. So look for that. Uh, I believe we scheduled October the 8th. So look for that. Gil, I'm going to hand it over to you, uh, sir, and I know you really wanted to lead things off by uh, talking about this earthquake swarm that we've had over the past month in the Kansas, Oklahoma area. Tell us if it can get started here. Yes, we've been seeing a, a definite uptake tick on uh, these indicators that tell us that uh, probably having something major happening, but also not just the west coast but a unusual amount of minor earthquakes in oklahoma kansas and northern and northern texas it's extreme the amount and that's too far away from madras there's something else that's going on there either that's a new volcano that's coming up from underneath a large one or something else is happening there hmm. what but about frack what about frack you don't think it's fracking at all could you imagine if there was a volcano out in that area that would be really Frightening. Well, there's yeah. something taking place, but it's not fracking. Does it? Fracking will give you a couple extra because it simply lubricates what was going to happen anyway. That's basically what it does. It doesn't create an earthquake. It simply mm -hmm. adds lubrication for it to either happen earlier or make smaller ones out of bigger ones. You know, mm -hmm. one of the two. But it it doesn't create a quake. There's something that I mean. We have thousands of them. If you look at uh, what the USGS is showing. Right. There's something going on, and I, I don't know what exactly it is, but it's drastic. And it's showing more activity there or, or equal to the activity as the West Coast. So, and, yes. and hardly anyone is talking about it. Mm. So there's something there, there's something happening there. Now, as crazy as that might sound, what was it, just last year we had that Princeton uh, or Rutgers professor indicating that we've got that new uh, super volcano up in the northeast, which shocked a lot of people. I haven't seen too many earthquakes, though, up in that area. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you've what you're seeing on your end, but my goodness, I'm right there with you. That That's awfully bizarre to see as many earthquakes as we have in the Kansas, Oklahoma area. And again, many will write off its fracking, but I don't know. As Gil says, maybe it is a new volcano. Well, another another big uh, concern is that there's some people lay a volcano right next to Mexico City as a super as a super volcano. Some there's there's a particular news uh, reporter that told me that his information that he's receiving is that the chambers underneath have merged. There used to be three chambers and they're merged into like a super yeah. uh, one large chamber, and that would classify it as possibly a super volcano well there's 30 million people living in mexico city it's right oh, there on the boy. side of them where would they go guess where straight to the border over here you'd have to get considerable distance away from such a large whoever survived if it exploded or if it just rumbled slowly we don't know if you never know what a volcano whether or not it'll go quickly or slowly so now i just mentioned at the top of the broadcast was just last week or around a week's time period uh 6.5 off of the coast of oregon as far as i saw there was no tsunami mentioned but guess what i'm just checking the usgs today 6.0 in bandon oregon uh just happening uh it looks like in the past uh, 10 hours or so with a follow-up quake this is very concerning along that cascadia rising zone which as you know gil 
FEMA has been running all kinds of drills for quite some time. It doesn't seem like we have an awful lot of time left before just like the worst of the worst will be happening along that entire West Coast, not just the Cascadia Rising area, but the Los Angeles area, which, as I mentioned at the top as well, a new fault line discovered. Talk to us a little bit about what you're seeing on the West Coast. Uh, we have an awful lot of listeners here from the West Coast. Should they be getting out of Dodge? <laughs> I definitely would not want to be living there. Um, matter of fact, there's very few. Uh, there's hardly any places left in the western part of the U.S. that's not showing heavily heavy activity. Uh, if you look at some of the uh, USGS findings, that they're not exactly uh, spreading around, but they do make make these uh, uh, maps. We have our own particular problems here in the U.S. that are magnified. One of the things that I've, you know, getting back to the Planet X, sure. deal, to show the progression of of effects. Okay, in the early 1800s. Uh, well, late, just after the Civil War, Eric, astronomers there in about 1890 or so had noticed that the outer planets were being warped by unknown gravity. Then modern scientists saw that also, and then they went ahead and did Pioneer and Voyager probes sending, looking for it, which they basically found it in 1992. December because that's when they went silent and then the Vatican went online 1993 well we saw the orbits of comets being warped inside our solar system in the mid 90s okay then that progressed to to our modern time within the last 10 years or more we got asteroids in our backyard over here basically around around earth that are being warped by unknown gravity or magnetic fields is actually what it is their orbits are being warped if you have any idea how many asteroids are actually circling around our orbit it's frightening think of it like a massive uh, beehive swarming yeah. okay that's how many there is out there. They're in, they're in the thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands. And if they're being warped, that means they can run into each other. And that's one of the main reasons why you're seeing so many fire uh, fireballs come into Earth's atmosphere. Because mm. they used to miss us. Now they're not. And scientists, uh, astronomers are cons considerably worried about this. And they're on a massive search to see if there's any asteroids that's going to be uh any large ones that would be heading towards earth or not yeah and it's not just it's not just the vatican too right we've got australia project uh, wormwood uh, their own government that's what they've labeled it uh you can go to their website i mean you simply type in project wormwood and you'll find australia uh obviously looking at the skies and you've got uh the, the, the lucifer project out there on mount graham which the vatican has a hand in i mean they are keeping track of what's going on in the sky and father malachi martin alluded to this and in conjunction everything that you said, uh, Gil, uh, I just posted this today. Ten significant meteor showers this month in September. Uh, Alpha, Gamma, uh, September, Epsilon, Perseids. I mean, I'm not going to name all of them, but it's quite a few. I don't think I've seen this many for a September time period. Any significance? Yeah, those are only the large ones they're telling you about. They're not <laughs> that they right. that they pick up on their radar. Uh, but, uh, yeah, these are... Uh, uh, we're 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 living on the threatening times right now. Uh, we could have some uh, much larger ones that could come in, take out a city, take out a forest, just like Kanguska in Russia happened. The majority of New York City, if that if that exact event happened over New York City, it would take the majority of the city out. That's how big it was. Keep in mind, Malachi Martin made the comment. After the Vatican went online in 1993, in 1996, he made this statement. Knowing of what's going on in space and what's approaching us. Yes. Could be of great importance in the next five to ten years. Now, he's talking as an astronomer. Well, if you take 1996, add ten years to that, that's 2006. Well, from my software models that I share to people to, for, for them to take a look at, if you reverse the 
the model to 2006, as he was saying, guess where that places our object? It would have been November 5th of 2006. It would have been at Neptune's orbit, where optical telescopes should have been able to see it. We hmm. haven't seen it yet, but he's telling us we should have seen it. Okay? So unless some something is interfering purposely with us seeing this, he's telling us right there that mm-hmm. that's who he's talking to. It's not the infrared, it's observatories, but to the optical telescopes that they would uh, see. And this matches the model we see. And as this thing cuts half of the distance between the sun and and where it is prior, when it cuts, you looking at doubling the effects. Okay, on what we're seeing. And that's what we're seeing on the growth of volcanic misactivity and earth uh, earthquake there. It's an exponential growth. Yes, fireballs yeah, as well. Everything is uh, increasing. And uh, I want to get your take and analysis. What's what's up with the theory that the government has some type of technology where they could they could potentially hide Planet X in the sky? Do you buy this? theory that maybe we could be seeing it by now but we, we can't I, I don't know i've heard this from a few people uh what do you what do you make of this thesis that they have technology that they're uh hiding stuff in the skies let's see right now if think of it like uh we see the smoke we feel the heat but we can't see the fire okay we got all of the effects to our uh, outer planets, as well as Earth and Sun and everything. Everything's being affected in our solar system. They are all showing effects. I could go through the whole list of them. We have an inbound object. We have evidence of, we have ancient artifacts of the past that shows us this. We have recent documents, which is, this is recent according to astronomy, 960 years ago, where they documented the orbital path of it. And we were able to plot it today in modern times. We have yeah. a real object. That's proven. It's how to deal with it. Well, they can't tell the public. And so have they figured a way? Well, if you look at the Washington Post in the 1980s, they stated that that this planet is so so dark that it's that it can't be seen early. That would mean that it, it doesn't uh, reflect light very, very well. Well, in about 2004, somewhere around that time period, we found a new moon that, that was orbiting uh, Jupiter that was always there that no one could really see because it didn't reflect light well. It was so dark it, uh, that over 150 years to 200 years, no one saw it. That looked at Jupiter, you know, almost every day they never saw it so can this be so dark yes that is that is one of the possibilities and the other thing is is there technology that could block it well there's youtube videos that shows lasers are able to cloak an object and uh reagan had put lasers in space and they have multiple uses one of them that they remember his speech at the UN where right, yeah. he, he made it sound like it was an alien invasion almost. You know, he said, like, if we had an outside threat <laughs> where we put our differences aside and, and <laughs> come together to what well, he was talking about this planet. Yeah, that was and always that, my. That was always my question, Gil, like when we're talking about space defense or whatnot, because I bring on Alana, Alana Freeland. We're going to bring her back on. We're, we'll talk more about space defense. Uh, you know, was this is that angle being used, you know, a threat of war with Russia or whatever other country just as a means to get this system up there in space so we can actually deal with the planet X system as opposed to another country, if, if that makes sense. I think there's multiple scenarios. It's more than one. Uh, they'd like it to be just one, but. Our enemies would like it to be more than one. They could see this as an advantage to to uh, to take us over. Uh, so they could, you know, there's different. I think there's different hands that are being played at the same time. So I don't think one mm. scenario yes. lines up with everything that I'm that I'm seeing. Another so, area, another yeah. area, Gil, uh, that has popped up uh, in the past few weeks 
has been the number of lightning storms. So these crazy storms that we're seeing, we just recently had one roll through Alberta, which bolted strikes of lightning every few seconds, which scared the bejesus, bejesus out of all kinds of people up there in Alberta area. But then also we had Poland, which killed, uh, there was lightning strikes that killed a dozen people. Atlanta, the PGA Tour Golf. We've got recorded uh, 220 sheep dead in Nepal. Uh, these lightning storms, I mean, wind and water is is a part of the Planet X system that, that's probably not talked about enough. And again, from our perspective, Gil, there's, there's this one uh, Catholic mystic that talks about the the storms being so horrific at a certain point that the, the, the lightning and thunder are going to cause people to die. I mean, not actually just strike them and kill them, but just, just actually being a part of that little storm or whatever. It's going to cause people to die. It's going to be that bad. Talk to us well, a little bit more. Well, sheep have that tendency. If you shock them too too bad, they will die. There are certain animals in uh, on Earth you can't uh, shock them. Just like fish, certain fish, you drop them into into water that's too much of a drastic shim- temperature, you shock them, they die. Well, it's the same thing if they, if you had a lightning bolt that hit close to it shocked some of the sheep, you know, it electrocuted some of the sheep maybe, or if it just came close enough. Yeah, they will just mm. they will just flop over dead. For human beings, yeah. When the two planets get close to each other, this thing's going to thread the needle between the moon and Earth. There's certain reasons why I say that. There's scriptural reasons. There's other things, and it's happened before in the past. We have direct evidence on Earth of plasma strikes. The Eye of the Sahara in Africa. You can look it up. Anybody looks at it. That eye of the Sahara is 30 miles across. It's a circular shape carving that's 30 miles across that is not concave. It's not a meteor impact. That's a plasma crater. You see ridges. There's multiple ridges in there, which is a helical core. That's what lightning is. It's a helical core that, that spins like a tornado. And it is eroded 300 foot of the mountain range down into the ground. And carved it out. It vaporized it. This is where you have this old ancient story of the Greeks and the Romans where Zeus threw lightning bolts that dissolved mountains. This happened around Hezekiah's time when Earth uh, tilted. Earth was drug outward slightly just a little bit. And that's where all calendars globally changed from 360 day year to 365 and a quarter day year. Something took place around 700 uh, B.C. It was actually 689 or something like that, uh, the actual date. Mm. And uh, because we have like over 30 different civilizations that change their calendar within the next five years. Because if you're over a week off per year, after the fourth year, you're a month off on your growing growing season. People can starve. So they had to change the calendar then. So, And we have ancient observatories that go all the way back to Joseph time. Of Egypt, and uh, the oldest one in Europe is in Gothic Germany. Well, these these observatories would put these big stones where you knew the sun was at certain points of the year, and when the sun lines up, when the shadow lines up with the center, with the with the center poles, that you can count the days in a year, and you know when when the equinox is because the uh, the shadow is equal. Uh, equal and everything so uh, they knew how long a, a, a year was and they had to change the calendars that's going to happen again where our calendar year is going to change to 364 day a year later on because it's the, the second event when it hits earth is going to push us slightly closer to earth and that's enoch's calendar 364 day year Another area, uh, Gil, that I have uh, taken up and, and been following here over the past week uh, ties in with uh, Catholic prophecy, and I would say common sense for anyone who studies uh, Planet X. Listen to a few of these headlines. Rotten egg odor advisory for the Salton Sea is now extended. That's out there on the West Coast. And then just one more here, if I could. Uh, Horseshoe Lake in Mammoth Mountain area is full of killer gas. Now, why would I be talking about that is because in Catholic end time prophecy, we have uh, various uh, 
holy seers, if you will, one of which was called Sister Gianna, the Nativity. Listen to this short little uh, blurb here. She says, as well as I see that on earth will be shaken in different places by frightful earthquakes. I see the whole mountains cracking and splitting with a terrible din. Only too happy will be one of those who can escape with no more than a fright. But no, I see out of this the gaping mountains, whirlwinds of smoke, sulfur, and tar, which reduce to cinders entire towns. So we have to take into consideration these fissures are opening up poisonous gases, and we're seeing more and more of these reports. Uh, Ecuador, uh, the two that I mentioned uh, recently, this, this is something we don't take into consideration too often, I don't think, Gil. Well... I can tell you, uh, drilling, remember, I have a background of working in the oil, oil and gas industry. Whenever you say rotten eggs smell around uh, the oil field, uh, we get a little worried because if that's a, that might be a indicator for something called hydrogen sulfide. And if you ever do smell it, you're already dead, pretty much. It's pretty uh, toxic. Yeah. So um, anytime you tell me that they're smelling something, obviously it's not that. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to, witnesses wouldn't be able to report it very, very well. But uh, uh, either that or they have a gas main leak, which I don't think is that because it's by a lake. Right. Uh, the, that would make sense. The oil companies purposely put in that odor in, in natural gas because methane doesn't have an odor. So they actually add that odor to where people can smell a leak. So if it's in the town, it would be different. But if it's by a lake out there, you're looking at Mother Nature. These are deep mm -hmm. uh, cavities underground where these gas are coming up. That means you have new fissures that are opening up. Mm -hmm. That you won't, I don't think you'd find that type of odor from. Uh, from bubbles at the bottom of a lake, you know, uh, being shaken and coming up. You wouldn't have that. Now's the time. If you ever decided to move off of the West Coast, <laughs> right, yeah. I would suggest leaving. Uh, I've, I've been saying it now for a while, Gil. I don't know what more it's going to take for some people, but I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, what what's the common response when you tell people this? And I would say more or less, you know, our timelines kind of kind of mesh. Uh, why why don't why aren't people taking initiative and you know leaving the areas which are obviously highly volatile? Another area that I've said is is not good. And I'm sure you as well. Florida. I mean, I see Florida going completely underwater now. We've got Hurricane Dorian, uh, you know, down in that area, uh, causing a water world. But why well, aren't people responding? That's the easy answer. Because most people haven't been through a serious disaster before. Anybody who's been through a serious disaster will move. Anybody that's been through a major hurricane will move. Anybody that's been through an actual major earthquake, if they have any brains between the ear, they know. They see the signs. They recognize. But people who haven't, still in the day, it's just like it's the movies and it's not going to happen to me. Mm -hmm. And I have nothing to worry about. I don't need to prepare. And the government's going to be taking care of me. Well, there's going to be a time in the near future, probably this next year, probably around after March, you're going to see a lot of global economic problems where they collapse. Yeah, and the government will not have the finances to help people in a disaster. So you have to have your own disaster plan, a tent, stove, sleeping bags, because it can happen to anybody anywhere in the United States or anybody in any country. You have to have your own emergency plan if you're hit by a missing disaster and a certain amount of rations. That's just good sense in the times we're living in. But who says that people have a certain amount of common sense or even... Uh, put their brain in gear. I mean, they, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very disappointed in what I'm seeing and hearing from people because the education level is so low and their ability to read the signs is so, yes. is so weak. Yes, I agree with you. People cannot read the signs. Uh, and I'm glad you, you brought up economics because I was hoping we could break that down a little bit in the last five minutes or so that we have. I've had on all the top uh, economists from around the world, uh, some indicating, you know, we've got some time before the collapse. They might say reset, whatever you want to say. Uh, I've had others say it could be by month's end, like 
by the end of this month, uh, although I personally don't see it that way. But then we've got one third of the top executives around the world saying we will definitely be in a recession by 2021. What is some of the latest that you're seeing uh, coming out of the government in conjunction with all of uh, the geoengineering, uh, you know, the flooding, uh, killing off farming in the Midwest? I mean, food prices are seemingly about to soar. Um, so talk to us a little bit more uh, about that, economically speaking, because I've been on record as saying that's the next really major thing. When, once you see that happen, man, you know the worst of the worst can't be too far behind it as it relates to natural disasters. The government is hiding the results from the farming thing. And the question is, how do you know that, Gil? You know? Well, as a friend of mine, we've been searching because... The data that they're reporting doesn't seem to match what we're visually seeing. And what it comes out is that there's another way of calculating this. It's called a GDD, Growing Degree Day of Crops. And our crops are between anywhere between 16% to 25% behind the curve on their growing time. That means we have 16 to 25% lack of a growing season. That means some of these crops will not reach maturity. They were planted late. Or their yield is going to be low. 25% on some, uh, some of the states. These are state figures. And they're not reporting that. After this coming harvest season, you can expect food prices to go up. Obviously, the, the government's pumping a little money in it, keeping the prices low at the moment. But at one point, you know, by I say about March, what, what concerns me the most is mid-March. If the demographics tells me that Russia has to fight a war within the next three years. I agree. They don't have the population, the young, the, the young people to fight one after that. So they're vulnerable. They have to reconquer the ex-Soviet states and conquer seven passes. Because if Europe goes back to the old way of doing things, of conquering for resources, which that's when, when America stops being the world policeman, that's what the countries are going to go back to because they can't afford to hit uh, to keep a trade deal, that means they're going to have to go back to colonizing and, co and conquering other countries' minerals. First mineral on the list is oil. And where would they turn to? If the Middle East is running, at least Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia is running out of oil, they would be turning to someone closer, which would be Russia, especially mm. if their economy is going to be collapsing. So Russia has to do something before that happens. Because once your population dwindles, you don't have enough working force to support the elderly and the tax structure. You, your banking system fails, then the government fails. Yeah, so, I, agree. I agree with you, Gil. It's in Catholic prophecy that Russia attacks America, overruns Europe. Uh, I've been saying this now when I do media appearances. We're, we're expecting that. And I would say, yeah, about three years, give or take. I, I, would, I would be shocked if Russia didn't uh, I would us. shorten that to this March. Wow. Uh, remember, for Russia, uh, I don't think Russia's, I don't believe, I'm hoping not, I'm, I'm wishing for the best, that America or Russia or China do not put nukes on their territory. That uh, I feel sorry for a surrogate war that's in between, you know, a small, you know, in some other country. But if someone drops a nuke on the other person's property, then it's all out on on each on each country so if they do tactical nukes in these other countries to to whatever they got to do to to stop these battles because there's not going to be enough trained personnel to go head to head mm. for them to stop the equipment so russia would need a entire warm season period to do the conquering that they need russia's winter is usually over on an average winter mid-March. So with this climate change patterns, we don't know if that's going to be a warm winter or a right. severe winter coming up, huh? or it lasts longer. Watch March. 
as soon as winter is over, that's where our biggest threat is going to come. That's when Russia is going to give the okay for Iran to do whatever it it wants because then Russia can back them because their ships are no longer frozen in. Their planes are fine. They don't have to de-ice them. They're in full working order. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so, it definitely makes sense, yeah. Because China knows, you know, damn well you don't fight a uh, a military battle, a long one, and you don't start off in the wintertime. Mm. You have to, you, winter has to be just about over. And getting so, back, go ahead. Go ahead. And we'd have to have some sort of economic problem, mm -hmm. and that would be the reset of the petrol dollar, you know, uh, you know, the... The dissolved part of the petrodollar. That's when we're the weakest, and if we, and we're getting there, when we get to March, we have both of those going 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 together. That would be our the weakest point. Mm. Trump's aware of this, and he's very well putting his guns up ready. As long as they don't attack, that's fine. But we have contracts to protect our allies. Somebody's going to start something somewhere. Yeah, and, and in addition to this, we're seeing an awful lot of, uh, you know, mark of the beast, facial recognition type of news as well. They want to try to get everyone into this one world socialist economy. They've got to collapse the system entirely in order for that to happen. It only makes sense. Uh, so we've got a dangerous concoction here between uh, rising food prices, uh, but then also these natural disasters uh, happening, uh, which is also dislocating a lot of people, Gil. It, it's not often talked about, but I mean, obviously, if your home is flooded out along uh, the coastline area, you got to go somewhere else. And uh, this is where the conversation of uh, New World Order smart cities come into place and FEMA camps. Uh, it's crazy times, uh, Gil. It truly is. Um, we're just about out of time, Gil. So please uh, finish off this podcast with some parting words on anything you'd like and then uh, do some shameless self-promotion time. And uh, look for Gil next month, October the 8th. We're hoping to do a video presentation. So look for that as well. But Gil, yep. uh, please do finish this out. Well, I just want to give a word of, uh, uh, leave on a positive note. Good. I actually believe that Trump has a plan economically. And that I think we'll see the results by Thanksgiving. A very big result. Remember where he uh, put that poster out, sanctions are coming on November 5th? Okay. Remember, he did that in January. He was talking about November 5th of this year. I won't say what I think that that means. But by Thanksgiving, I think financially, many of us will have a, a significant uh, turnaround. And that will help the retailers throughout the next one month period of the greatest shopping spree, spree where retailers are out of debt. So he's boosting their revenue streams tremendously in the retail and in the public before the collapse of the petrodollar happens and we have 30 percent 15 to 30 percent of our dollars are overseas the the more severe that overseas countries are the more dollars that they need at the moment so that's causing greater stress but once this reset happens those petrodollars are coming back and you're going to go to about 200 to 300% inflation. Remember where the Bible says you work all day for your food, basically. Trump will freeze the banking system where they can't foreclose on you until he gets through this period where he can reset the economy. Then the dollar, when he pegs the dollar to gold and he pays off part of the debt, I'd say maybe half to a quarter. You're looking at a dollar that's two to three times stronger than what it is now. So that'll be a benefit to everybody, but there's going to be a little rough time. And that's where we're most likely to be hit by war, by our, our enemies. Is that period of weakness right in that small point. And that's where Trump is building a firewall on our trade and our weapons for us not to be attacked during that. A lot of people are playing uh, checkers, and Trump is playing chess. He's a quite a few steps ahead of them, and he knows some of their next moves. 
and um, that's a good thing. Well, Gil, we always appreciate you coming on the show, uh, sir. Again, uh, folks, uh, make sure you get over to his website. M- mention your website again, Gil, and the, and the YouTube, if you would, before we let you go. Well, anybody wants some free graphics to, that shows you uh, where it passed in the past, 14 times in biblical records, and another five secular. Uh, they match up with artifacts that I show. Uh, you can go to planet7x.net. At the bottom of the website is a Google Drive link that you can click on. And you can download the PDF book for free. And it shows you all the graphics. Then if you want to see videos and other interviews, uh, you go to YouTube, Planet 7X. You're going to see me standing by my telescope. You go there and you can... Uh, you can look at some of the older, if you want to see a presentation kind of uh, present, which we will also do together. But uh, mm-hmm. there's uh, uh, some three-hour videos that you can break down into smaller ones that gives you that, that, that I go through every one of the slides. Today, we couldn't do it because I have a, uh, a brand new computer because my old one fried. And for some reason, the video is not syncing with the uh, Skype, and so we couldn't do a, a video, video interview today. Well, we'll, we'll so. get that done. We'll get that done in uh, October the eighth. And uh, folks, uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in to Tran Cat Night special guest exclusive podcast for this September the fifth, two thousand nineteen. Until next time, stay safe and God bless. <laughs>